Ladies and gentlemen, this is Joe's Classic Video Games back with another cool pinball repair video for you this evening. We have been working on this Williams Firepower. Fantastic game, right? Been trying to fix up this Williams fi Firepower for our buddy Rodney. Now, we have another one here right next to it that belongs to our buddy James. So we're working on his later, but we're getting Rodney's done first. Uh, he picked this thing up from a gentleman, and it started acting up pretty much immediately. So, uh, it uh, at the end of the last video, it was having switch problems, so that's what we're going to mess with first. Okay, so whenever I go into the switch test, it immediately gives me like eight numbers of switches that it says are on right now. So the way this thing works is... Let me be you very careful here, you know, I don't want to, you know. <laughs> if I hit a switch, that number changes to the switch number. That is the test number. It's test number three. Let me, let me hit another one. So I just hit let, switch 11 and just hit switch 10. So I think they call this the switch edge test. Okay, so whenever you first go into that test, it immediately throws all these up. 56, 55, 8, 39, 47, 48, 44, and 40. I read them out of order just to confuse you. So I went, I went into it about three different times just to make sure that I wrote them all down. So it's telling me that 56, 8, 39, 40, 55, 47, 44, and 48 are on. Which it should not be, because there's none of the switches are on. Um, so I don't know why that would be. Now there is a thing with Firepower, where originally Firepower had drop targets. So I wonder if there's any chance that that could be something left over from the drop target design. We're, we're going to look here in a minute. But if I go around and hit switches, some of them don't work. So we figured out on the last video that the trough switches are not being realized. So since it can't tell that the balls are in the trough, the game will never start. But it was starting because he played it when he bought it, but now it's not starting. So there's, you know, there's just something going on. I mean, we got a bunch of them that aren't working. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to carefully go through and write down all of the ones that do work <laughs> and keep a separate list of all of the ones that uh, are stuck on, apparently. You know, that, those eight that it told me right at the beginning. And then um, we'll kind of compare and see what in the world's going on. So I think maybe a couple of the lines are screwed up and are stuck on and a couple of them don't work. And so the, the switches are just a mess. Okay, folks, so we're in the schematics, and, um, you know, I'm thinking about it. Whenever these come on at the beginning, if I hit another switch, they don't come back on. So it's not like they're, I don't believe they're uh, constantly held down or whatever. I think it just triggers one time, and then, you know what I mean? So it'll say 56, 8, 40, 47, 39, 55, 44, 48. It's basically telling me that something has hit all of those switches. But then if I hit 11, it just stays on 11. It doesn't go back and say, okay, now something hit 56 again, something hit 8 again, something hit 40 again. It doesn't do that. So it just does it once, and on we go. Um, so I don't know if that's because they're just held on, or and that's how it works, or, or what. But. but here is the switch matrix chart for firepower. Okay, so it's arranged in a row and a column, and so, um, you know, your typical matrix. So basically it's sending power out, 5 volts out or whatever, on uh, one line, and then it's strobing the other line, looking to see if the 5 volts is on that line or not. And by doing that, it can tell um, which switch is closed. It's a brilliant little thing, right? Um, so it's all screwed up, though, because it thinks that 
there are a bunch of switches closed that are not closed, okay? So here are the ones that it says are closed. It says number eight first, which I don't even have on this. See, this it starts with nine. Number eight must be column one, which is probably on the coin door or something. So number eight it doesn't even exist on this part of the schematic. And then we go up to number 39. So it is that switch right there, which is the top power target, it says. Okay. So what we're looking for is we're looking for rhyme or reason. Okay. So number 39, and then uh, number 40 is also stuck on. So that's the one down below it. Number 40 is the middle power target. So what do these have in common? Well, they're on the same column. Okay. And then we move on to number 44 is stuck on. Number 44, it says, is the right outside rollover. Well, it's up here. That's kind of weird. And then uh, number 47, which is that one. Okay, well, that's next to the 39. It's on the same row. And it's on the same column as number 44. And then number 48. Uh-huh. So now we have three on the same column. Uh, and then for a second I saw 38 and 46 come on as if they had been triggered. 38 and 46. So that would be that one and that one. So this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, and this one. What in the world is that all about? Okay, so then another thing you can do is I wrote down all of the ones that work. So uh, let's see if 37 or 45 ever worked. Um, no, I never saw those come on at all. 36 and 44. 44 is stuck on. 36, I never saw do anything. 35 and, and 36, for instance, is the upper right eject hole. I couldn't get that to work. 35 and 43, um, neither one of those ever worked. 35 is the E rollover, and 43 is the right inside rollover. 34 and 42, neither one of those ever worked. 34 is the R rollover, 42 is the right kicker. 33 and 41, Never got either one of those to work. 33 is the I rollover. And uh, 41 is the bottom power target. Okay, so whenever you got a whole ton of them not working, sometimes it's real obvious you'll just have all of these won't work. But we've got some locked on, some not working. That's almost always going to be a, a problem on the actual driver board. Now the the... Sometimes a, a diode will do something crazy. So sometimes you'll see something like these three work and then all these are shorted on. It's because maybe that diode's messed up. Or, or sometimes it'll be weird where like this diode's messed up and it makes this column lock on or, or just weird stuff because of the way the voltage runs backwards whenever the diode's shorted. So it could be a diode, but since we've got so many of them screwed up, I think we're going to have one of our lamp uh, driver chips or something screwed up. So let me look at, let's look at the schematic section where it shows what actually drives the matrix. Okay, so we're deep in the schematics and they run the matrix with a PIA chip. So on the driver board there are three of these PIA chips and these are 6821 PIA chips. Now it actually says PIA which, you know what that stands for? I know a lot of you think that, but it, it means peripheral interface adapter. So basically there's 6800, or I think it's a 6800, that's driving the, the, the board, can talk to these PIAs, which can like basically interface with a bunch of inputs and outputs and all that stuff. So that's what it's doing. Okay, so it's the CPU is talking to this PIA. Oh, there's actually four of them, I forgot. There's one on the MPU too. So there's one PIA on the MPU and there's three on the driver board. One of them on the driver board runs all of the lights. One of them on the driver board runs all of the solenoids. 
and one of them on the driver board runs all the switches, so we're having switch problems. So this PIA could be bad. Okay, It's in a socket. That would be easy to swap out. The deal with the PIAs is um, on a Williams game, if they're bad, usually the game won't boot. It'll lock up. Something will be screwed up. Because if the output is bad, the input is usually bad. So like if, if the... Like if this line is screwed up, usually this line is being held down or something. The PIAs, that's how they fail a lot of times. It's not all the time, but if the game's up and running, I mean, it's not saying that there's not a line or two out on the PIA, but it, it usually isn't catastrophically screwed up. So it could be our problem because we've got like half the switches not working and half of them stuck and all this. So how does the thing work? Well, it has these matrix drives, which... You know, just the the layman's way of looking at it. I am not a uh, an engineer, but basically, it's sending out a signal. It's pulsing this signal, and it's checking all of these. Uh, I think these are the columns, right? So it's checking all of these, and it's doing it real fast. That's why. That's why. Uh, if you look at it, it's pulsing. It's using the clock signal basically. So it's, it's strobing through those, those lines real quick, looking to see if any of them are closed. And that's how it tells which switches are closed. Right? So let's say it does this first one. So it sends out a little uh, a handshake or whatever. It, it's monitoring that line. And that's, let's say that's, the, uh, let's say that's the, the first column. Well, then those six switches that we were looking at, it can tell which one is doing what or whatever, depending on the timing and when it gets power back on that line and if that line's uh, um, stuck high or grounded or whatever, right? So whenever you touch the switches together, I believe what it does is it, I don't know if it grounds it or sends it high, but basically when you touch the switch together, it's going to send... Um, power or a ground back through this line and then whenever the PIA checks it's going to say oh that switch must be connected and since everything has two wires connected to it it can tell which one is connected and that's how it keeps all the switches straight okay so what we what we're going to do is we're going to remove the connector on these drives and we're going to check on the pins where it goes out and see if it's able to do its little handshake on the other side is the uh, inputs, right, and which is the rows or whatever. So it's the, the other way. But all of this goes back to the PIA. So all you have to do is check and see which ones are like each other. So I'll show you what I mean. Okay, so with the game off, I unplugged the switches, which is these two connectors. This is, again, this is on a Williams, so it's very easy to, to do. These are our PIA chips. This is the one for the solenoids. This is the one for the lamps. And this is the one for the switches. Okay. It's actually kind of the most simple one because it's all just right there. So I've unplugged the two connectors and I've hooked up a Logic Pro. Now, if you don't have a Logic Pro, if you're going to be working on these, it's a good idea to get one. I'm not all about trying to get people to spend money. So don't go spend a bunch of money on one. You may be able to get one local to you. If you want to order one online, we've got them listed on our web page. These are about 20 bucks, or they were before the world went crazy. They may be 100 now. I don't know, but last I looked, they were like 20 bucks. It's just a little cheap Logic Pro. And if you're just starting out, don't buy a bunch of expensive stuff because you don't know what you're doing. Buy a bunch of cheap stuff that you'll break or throw away or then... Like, if you figure out how this thing works and you don't like this one, well, then you'll know what the good one is, you know, and you can order the good one. So buy, buy cheap stuff first. But um, you can get one on our website, though, if you want. Go to lionsarcade.com. There's a parts page, and we've got a bunch of stuff like this linked on um, uh, one, of the, one of the pages. There's a parts page up at the top. A, little, a lot of the stuff we use in our videos we have on there. So um, go check that out. This one here, you can see that the label is missing off of it. I ripped it off or something years ago. And then even the little pin that's supposed to be in the end was missing. So I put a little screw in there and it works just fine. So that's what I'm saying. This thing is a piece of crap. It's like it, you couldn't sell this for five bucks if you tried to, right? So don't you don't have to have expensive stuff to fix these things. If you 
if there's nothing wrong with expensive stuff, and if if you if you know how to use it and you want to use expensive stuff, there's nothing wrong with that. But don't let anybody tell you that you got to spend a bunch of money to work on these things. That's nonsense. Okay, so here, so this is our PIA chip, and it's talking to these two chips, these four chips, and then going through all of these resistors and capacitors and all of that. Now, do you need to know how that works? Not really. Not really, because we're lucky that we've got eight of each. So all you really got to do is kind of compare them to each other, and you can figure it out, right? Now, if you know how it works, there's nothing wrong with knowledge. There's nothing wrong with education. There's nothing wrong with knowing it. But again, don't let anybody make stuff so complicated that you think that it's out of your realm, right? So I'm going to use my logic probe, and I'm just going to check the pins on the board to see what it's doing. Because this PIA chip is talking to these, and it's doing a bunch of stuff over here. So let's just compare, because we've got eight of each to compare to, right? So if I check that pin, it's high. If I carefully check, they're all high. So what does that tell us? Well, one, it probably tells us that's a useless check. They're probably always high. But I guess if one of them was low, that would tell you that there's something wrong with that line, right? But uh, apparently, and if you look close, it looks like the, the wires, the traces here go to these two chips and then to here. So it looks like this part of it, all it's doing right now is uh, it's at a high level. So it's looking for something to ground, I guess, right? So if we check the other connector, oh, I'm trying to do it where you can see it. Okay, so that's pulsing. That's kind of an ugly signal, but it is pulsing. You can even hear it, right? That one as well. That one as well. That one as well. Oop, that one's stuck high. Hear the difference? Pulsing, high. And low is, right? So I just touched ground. Ground is low. And high is high. Okay, so pin, the fifth pin up is high. Then there's a key. Then the next pin, also high, high, high. Okay, so our top four pins are high, and these four pins are pulsing. Well, that don't seem right, does it? But if you look, and you know, you can use the schematics for this, you can see the traces coming off the pins, running over to here, and the ones that I can see, it looks like it's, hmm, one, two, three, four. Yeah, look, there's there's seven and then eight. There's another one up here. It looks like the top four, if you count this one, all connect to that top chip, and then the bottom four all connect to this chip. So that bottom one's, everything's pulsing, and then the top one, everything's high. So which one's screwed up? Well, the ones that's the one that's high is probably screwed up because things don't usually get stuck in a state where they're pulsing. You know, it'll stick low or stick high. And it seems like everything going into the top chip is just stuck high and everything going to the bottom chip is just stuck low. But we can test it. I said everything going to the bottom chip is stuck low. It's not stuck low. Everything in the bottom chip is pulsing. That's what I meant to say. Okay, so back on our schematics. This is the connector we were messing with, 2J2, and pin 1 is the top one. So that one is stuck high. 2J2, 2 is stuck high. 3 is stuck high. 4 was the key, and then 5 is stuck high. So 1, 2, 3, 4 was the key, and 5. 6, 7, 8, and 9 were all pulsing. Okay, well, if you look at those, they are going to this chip, IC17, and then all of these go back to the PIA, right? So it's going to IC17, and it was pulsing. Pin 8 was going to IC17, and it was pulsing. Pin 7 was going to IC17, and it was pulsing. Pin 6 was going to IC17, and it was pulsing. 
Pin 5 was going to IC18, and it was stuck high. Pin 3 was going to IC18, and it was stuck high. Pin 2 was going to IC18, and it was stuck high. And pin 1 was going to IC18, and it was stuck high. Okay, so I would assume that the one that's stuck high is wrong, that it shouldn't be stuck high, it should be, it should be strobing, pulsing. But we're going to prove it just to make sure, okay? So see how this says SMD8, SMD7, SMD6, SMD5. So that's saying switch matrix drive 8, 7, 6, and 5. Those are the ones that are stuck high. Okay, so if we go back to our matrix, see where it says 2J2, that's the connector we're talking about. And pins 1, 2, 3, and 5 are the ones that are stuck high. See how 4 is missing because that's the key. So 2J2, 1, 2, 3, and then it's column 8, 7, 6, and 5. They were calling it the drive on the uh, driver board, right? But 8, 7, 6, and 5. And then if you look over here... Yeah. Okay, so column 8 is switch 57 and 58. And it says, right ball ramp and center ball ramp. I don't even, there's no ball ramp on it. So maybe that was a Steve Ritchie special where he took the ramps off of it at some point. I don't know. But I don't have those on my machine that I'm aware of. So I have never seen those work. So my theory is, Column 8 ain't doing a damn thing. <laughs> All right. And then column 7, this one, it seemed to me, was stuck high. It's 49, 50, and 51. Okay, so over here, 49 is the center, center middle, left, stand-up. That never worked. I'm looking on my list over here. Uh, 50 is the lower middle, left, Stand up. Center, middle, left, stand up. That's weird. 50. Uh, 50 never worked. Never saw that do anything. And then 51 is the left ball ramp. What in the world do they mean by ball ramp? I don't even... And let's look, it's firepower. I don't know, people. Must be leftovers from the from the early design or something. Let's look at the switches they meant, they mentioned just so we know if it's the right one. Look, left outside rollover, left inside rollover. Oh yeah, this is an early this is an early schematic. It's from March 1980. Okay, left outside rollover, left inside rollover, left kicker, left eject hole, upper middle, left stand up. Uh, spinner, top left stand up, one, two, three, drop target, four, five, six, drop target. Okay. Yeah, see, so this is the one that actually used the drop target. So this is from an early revision. That's a, this ain't the best one to be using, but we'll figure it out. 53 and 54 uh, is the left eject rollover and the right eject rollover. Those did not work. So I never saw anything on column seven work. I'm not even convinced half the stuff on column seven actually exists. Okay, so column six... Switch 41, never worked. That is the bottom power target. I don't even know what those are. Uh, stuff must have changed big time. It, they must have just completely redone the game. The right kicker, never worked. 43 is uh, the right inside rollover, never worked. 44, uh, the right outside rollover, never worked. 45, so I think I'm making my point here, right? So these are all stuck high, and none of these switches work. They're either locked on, or they don't work at all, or whatever. Okay? And they all go back to that board, and they all go through IC18. So I, you know, I'm pretty conclusively conclused, <laughs> convinced that IC18 is junk. And so, uh, and of course I know that it's supposed to pulse, right? So I, I'm just... You know, I'm trying to work through the logic out loud so that you can see how people track this stuff down. This is a real simple issue to fix. And once you think about it and you kind of look into it, you compare this to this and that to that and look at this and look at that. It's just logic, people. Just logic. 
Sherlock Holmes would have figured it out a long time ago. Okay, so we're going to take out the driver board and we're going to replace that chip and hopefully that's going to fix all of our switches. Here we go. All right, folks, so here is our driver board. I went ahead and removed the chip. Look at this. I accidentally broke it. Ugh. I like, I, whenever I take them out, I like getting them out in one piece, but, you know, I went a little too quick. So I put a socket in and a new one. That is a 7406, in case you're wondering. All right, so it's simple as that, easy peasy. Now we're gonna go put it back in and test it. We've already worked on this board in the previous video. Um, so I'm not gonna do a bunch of other stuff. We, I already went through and I checked all of the solenoid uh, uh, drivers. There was one that was locked on and all of that. We cleaned the PIAs and I put that new 40 pin connector on it. So if you didn't see the first video, go back and watch it. Um, and all of the lamps are working. I think there's one that's not. It's probably a bulb. So we don't really have anything else we need to do to this thing. It's just unfortunately the switches weren't working. And unfortunately it was a chip that wasn't in a socket. So since I replaced it, I went ahead and put a socket in. In case that's a problem again, it'll be really easy for somebody to swap it out. You won't even have to take it out of the game. Okay, so I'm going to slide it back in. And then instead of just trying to play it, I'm going to test our repair. And see if I'm correct. And now all eight of those are pulsing. And uh, hopefully, hopefully that'll be it. So let me slide it back in the machine, and then we'll check it with the Logic Probe again. Okay. Got it back up and running. Let's check. Pulsing. 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 <laughs> All right, so that did it. Okay, so... Uh, let me put this all back together and we'll uh, go into the switch test again and see if it does what it was doing. Okay, so upon reinstalling it, I cannot get into test mode. Also, if I hit start, nothing happens. And we've got credits on it. So we've still got some kind of switch problem. So let's see. Um, So, we've got pulsing here on this top wire, but not on the, I'm on this top connection, but not on the actual wire. So we've got pulsing on everything, but if you check the actual wire, it is not. The second pin down is, third is, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth. All of them are, except the top one is not. So why would that be? Uh, connector problems. And when I touch the pin, it doesn't do it either. So it's probably bad solder on the board. So we get to take it out yet again. Oh, holy moly. It might just be the wire and it's just the connector, but I think it's the actual pin is what it seems like. Okay, so I gotta mess with that a little bit, but you can see how just looking and comparing things, everything's, you can, it'll help you uh, track everything down. Uh, with a logic probe, you can do the same thing with a multimeter because it would be five if it's high, zero if it's low, and somewhere in between if it's pulsing. So that can work too. Okay, so uh, let me see if I can figure that out. I guess something on that line isn't happy. All right, folks, we are back in the test mode. We're in display test. By the way, the displays look weird. It's just my camera. Um, I don't. I can't figure out how to. You can if you put it on auto, it makes the displays do weird stuff on the camera. Okay, so uh, the display test is working. 
There's the lamp test. Okay. Solenoid test. <laughs> okay. 56, 8, 40, 39, 55, 47, 48. Look, it's the same thing. 57. What in the world? Is that the one out here? Okay, 44. So we're getting, we got that one back. 43, we got that one back. We're, we have multiple faults, people. That is our problem here. Okay, so I'm going around testing things. We now have that back. We now have that back. We have that one back. And that one back. That one. That one. That one. That one. We have our spinner back, and really, that's all that matters. Okay. The two rollovers. So it looks like we've got all of our not working switches back, or most of them. Okay, so uh, i got to write down some more stuff. So let me make another list of all of the ones that are working and all of the ones that it's telling me are locked on whenever you go into test. So progress, but we haven't fixed it yet. So probably got problems on the other side of those four chips. <laughs> so uh, let me make another list and we'll keep going. Okay, so once again, I've went back and wrote down everything. So when you turn it into switch test mode, it locks on 56, or says it's locked on, 56, which isn't even a switch. But if it was a switch, it would be on this last row. 56, 55, which also doesn't exist. Uh, 57, 58, now 57 and 58 are the right ball ramp and the center ball ramp. Remember I was saying, I, that, well, I think I don't have ball ramps. It's the, it's the multi-ball ramp. This was the first solid state multi-ball game, so they um, hadn't standardized all of their phrasing yet, and nothing had ramps on it yet, so something this old... The ball ramp is down where the balls are. So those two are locked on at the beginning. They're supposed to be. So that's good. So I'm going to take them off our list of problem childs. But still, 56 and 54. I mean, I'm sorry. 57. What the hell are we doing? 56 and 55. <laughs> okay, 56 and 55. Okay. And then... 48 and 47. Now those actually have things. So 48 is the lower right stand-up. Okay. And 47 is the playfield tilt. Well, that would cause you all kinds of problems. If the game's tilted, it's not going to let you start it, probably. So the playfield tilt. Okay. And then uh, the only other one is number eight, which is actually the button on the coin door, I believe. Let's, let's check real quick. Switch eight is the high score reset button on the coin door. It's not stuck down. So we still got a board problem. So let me go back to the other one, though. But it, So here are the here is the column that's missing. It's on the, the control panel. I mean, the coin door, basically. So it's the plum bob tilt, the ball roll tilt the credit button, the right coin shoot, the center coin shoot, the left coin shoot, the slam, tilt, and the high score reset. So uh, that's all the stuff like on the coin door. So it's telling me 8 is stuck on, which would be right here on column 1. 8 is stuck on. Um, 48 is stuck on. And 56 is stuck on, even though it doesn't exist in the game. But see, the matrix exists in the game. So if this was stuck to that, it would think that this is screwed up. Okay, I know it's all confusing, folks. It's confusing to me, too, but we're going to figure it out. 
don't worry about it. If this, if you're watching this video, hell, I already figured it out weeks ago. Don't worry about it. Okay. Um, so it's saying that one, that one, and that one. All right. So that's what it says. Whatever you first start. Now, why would it say that? Which one of those are legitimate? Eight is not legitimate. That's what shouldn't be stuck down. Uh, Forty-seven is the playfield tilt. It may be legitimate. Maybe it's stuck down. Forty-eight is the lower right stand-up. That's on the playfield. It may be legitimate. Maybe it's stuck down. Um, 55 and 56 are stuck on. They can't be legitimate because they don't even exist. Okay, so one of those three may have a problem where it's causing us all kinds of issues. So let's look at something else. All right. If I hit... If I hit number six... One, two, three, four, five, six. It's on this row. Number six is one of the coin door switches. If I hit that one, the screen immediately says 6, 14, 22, 30, 38, 46. All of those trigger. Strangely, 54 does not. <laughs> Whatever, right? So if I hit six, all of those trigger. Now, when, usually whenever that happens, you've got, that sounds like a diode problem or, or something, right? So it may be that a diode on one of those is messed up. But number six is the only one that does it. If I hit this one, it works fine. 14 works, 22 works, 30 works, 38 works. 46 works, and 54 works. But if you hit six, it makes all of them work. So it could be there's a there's a, um, a the diode on six may be screwed up. See how there's see how there's a diode drawn in. So power can go that way, but power can't come this way because of the diode. So what happens is let's say that one shorts. Well now power comes this way, and it can trigger stuff or something. I don't know. It, it messes it all up. It's bad. You don't want to short a diode. Now, where the diode crosses, like pin six, is kind of the common thing. You know, that that doesn't always mean that's the one with the diode screwed up. It could be the next one's the one with the diode screwed up. So it's just a big pain, right? So there's something going on with six and that row, which is row six. Okay. We also have phantom closures on row seven and row eight. All right. So here's all the ones that are not working right now. Uh, 15 is not working. 23 is not working. 31 is not working. 39 is not working. 47 is not working. But that's not all. 16 is not working. 24 doesn't exist. 32 is not working. 40 is not working, and 48 is not working. So we've got two rows here that don't work, and then we've got one row here that if you trigger this one, it makes all of them come on. So I got to go back with what we were just doing. I'll bet it's one of those freaking chips on the board again. So this time we're going to go the other way. It's row 8, 7, and 6 are screwed up. And they go to driver board connector 2J3 at pin 1, 3, and 4. Now, how come we couldn't tell that the way we were checking it earlier? Well, because we had the plugs disconnected, and it's just telling us 5 volts, probably because they're just tied high there or something. And that just goes low whenever it connects to the pulse on the other side or something. Who knows, right? But, uh, but you can't test it the way we were testing it earlier. So row 8, 7, and 6, let's go see if there's anything that they have in common um, on the schematic. Okay, so all three of those lines have IC16 in common. Is that, no, I'm sorry, IC, yeah, 16 in common. So we're going to swap that next. All right, so that chip is a 4049, and that's the one that runs those rows that we were looking at. The two rows that don't work and the other row that does the weird thing where it locks on. So, whenever I turn it on now, I get three switches closed, which are the three in the trough. They're supposed to be closed. 
that's that's how it's supposed to be. And now let's see if we got our other ones. stuck. Thirty-nine forty. I think they may just be stuck. Fifty-four forty. Fifty-four forty. Okay, and then over here. Forty-nine fifty forty. But they're all connected together, so I think they may just need adjustment. Fifty. 14, that's our spinner, let's roll over here, 32, 33, 34, 35, I think we still may have a diode somewhere acting up on us, um, but it looks like they're all working now, so I think we've got all of the switches working, we just don't have, oh let me try this. This one on the coin door was the one that was making all of them lock one. Let's see if I can get it to do it. Yep, 6, 14, 22, 30, 38, 46. Right? So that line is still doing that weird thing whenever you hit uh, the coin door switch. But I think we got all of the switches working. Let's see if it will actually start a game now. Even though we've still got that problem on that one switch line. So we're in a track. Alright, so it can see the trough switches now. So now it can actually start a game. Because it knows all three switches are there. Or all three balls are there. Okay, so we got to figure out why that one is making everything lock on. All right, folks. So uh, one of the 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 switch on the coin door on that on that uh, coin switch, the little diode on it was just bent over, touching the metal plate on the switch, which was shorting both sides of the diode together. Moved it a little bit to where it wasn't shorted anymore, and now it doesn't seem to be doing our locked on switch thing. So we'll play it for just a second, just to see if anything else obvious pops up but it looks like it's probably going to start the game now and it's going to let the switches work all right so got a few light bulbs not working oh and i think the the lane change isn't working Shield works, that's good. But not twice. <laughs> Boy, she's snappy. Flipper rails are nice and smooth, that's good. <laughs> All right, so it needs a little bit more work. We need some light bulbs. Uh, oh, the pop bumper light bulbs are working. They just weren't on yet. Need some light bulbs. There's a couple switches that need adjusted still. It looks like this one was double triggering in the out lane. Um, Oh, the the uh, lane change. Uh, need to see if that switch isn't touching or it's dirty or something. But all in all, I think we're looking pretty good. So there you go. Now we're going to do another video on this because we're going to do a little bit of paint touch-up. This is a pretty common problem on these, where it wears down to the wood here in front of the slings. 
So what I'm going to attempt to do is clean just that area to get the wax off of it and then repaint it and then see if I can just spot clear it and fix that make it kind of a minor little repair. And then also this here will be easy to do. Um, we talked about that whenever uh, Rodney dropped it off. So we'll see if we can get that looking a little better. But leave your comments below. Let us know what you think. Hopefully if you have switch problems on your machine, that'll help you kind of work through it. And again, this would not be just on a Firepower, but uh, which is a System 6 game, but it would be on anything 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And even the more modern games have a similar thing going on. So leave your comments below. Let me know what you think. Make sure to give us a thumbs up for taking the trouble to film it for you. And make sure to check out my brother, Donnie. Now, if you don't know about my brother, Donnie, my brother has his own channel here on YouTube as well. He's crazier than we are. We do vintage pinball machines, arcade games, and jukeboxes. But my brother Donnie does uh, vintage trucks, things like that. And we've got a couple buildings in a small town near here that we're fixing up to try to uh, help revitalize their downtown area. Uh, and try to fix the old buildings up and rent them. So go check that out if you're interested. I will see you over there, but I'll see you back next time whenever we do a little painting on this firepower.